Good morning. I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting in Needham, Massachusetts. We're a local yarn shop and we do a weekly podcast, mostly weekly, um, where I show what's going on in the shop, talk about different things, and sometimes do a demonstration. Um, today I wanted to, the first thing I wanted to do was uh, announce our annual sale. It's this year we're calling it our pre-Super Bowl sale. We usually do it on Super Bowl Sunday, but that happens to be the weekend of Vogue Knitting, and so some of us will be there, and um, we wouldn't have staff to cover. So it's this Sunday, February 5th, from 1 to 5, and all the yarns in the shop are going to be 25% off. So this is a bargain. We also will have some other yarns that are up to maybe 50% off. So if you want some more winter projects, or we may have some summer yarns that are on sale, um, and maybe some other special things going on. I haven't quite figured that out yet. I'm suffering a bit from jet lag. I was in California for a few days and got back late last night. Um, yeah, my, pl my plane was 40 minutes early, but then I got caught in a traffic jam at midnight. Um, on the Southeast Expressway, two traffic jams. So it took me a long time to get home. So I'm a little tired. Uh, today I wanted to show you, or talk to you about sleeves on sweaters. I'm making a sweater called Good Grandpa Cardigan by Kadri. I think I'm pronouncing, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not sure. In any case, I'm making it in the Illimani Amelie, which I have talked about before. It's a beautiful soft yarn with alpaca in it, and this is the sweater. I'm just finishing the second sleeve, and I'm about to do the button band. So there's a button band on here, which I may talk about next time. I'm not sure. But I wanted to talk to you about sleeves. This is a sleeve where you um, pick up stitches along here. And I can't remember, it told me to pick up, it did tell me to pick up um, way more than I wanted, no, way less than I actually did. But I like to pick up as many as I can so that I don't have gaps in here. So I think they wanted 66, I had 73. So that was, um, a big difference. I started with that, and as it turns out, that was fine. Um, and when you do sleeves, it tells you um, to decrease every X number of rows. What I like to do is do a decrease and put in a marker that shows it. So, and then between here and here are, I think it was eight rows, and that's a kind of a standard decrease on a sleeve. But it wanted me to decrease down to, I can't remember, 46 stitches. I didn't feel like doing that because I felt like that was going to be too um, tight on my arms. So I put in my little marker and then I may have done it even further apart. Um, but what you can do rather than count, if you don't feel like counting, do your first decrease, then count, and do your second decrease, and then just measure that. And so you can just measure if you don't feel like counting and paying attention. It doesn't matter, really, if you, um, it doesn't matter that much if you're a few rows off. It, it just really doesn't matter. So I ended up doing one, two, three, four decreases. And for me, that was plenty. I didn't do all of what they said. So I went down and I kind of like, and on this one, it doesn't, show it, it pretty much has a very gradual decrease on the sleeve. I like them when they're, I like that new thing where they're a little bit puffy at the bottom. So on my other sleeve, if you can see, it's a little puffy here. So what I did, because um, I wanted this to fit, so I had to, because I didn't do all the decreases, I had to decrease down to the right number for the cuff. So I just decreased it. I figured out how many stitches I had. I figured out how many I needed. And I divided that number, or no, the difference, 
into um, the number that I had. So it was 60, at 60 stitches, I needed to do 14 decreases to get down to the number they wanted was 46 stitches. So I divided 60, my number of stitches, by 14. And that was how often I did. So it turned out to be every four stitches I did a decrease. And then I did the sleeve, I mean did the cuff. So it gave me this nice little puffy thing here, which I liked. And I'm a little lazy, and I didn't feel like doing all those <laughs> decreases. But I was nervous that the um, sleeve is going to be too tight, and I don't like tight sleeves. So really, you can think about these things. You don't have to follow the exact directions for something. You can think about what it is you really want. Do you want to do all those decreases? Do you want to do more decreases? It's within your power to do that. And once again, and I've said this over and over again, you're going to use your own measurements for this um, distance between your underarm and your cuff. Um, because, of course, everyone has different length uh, arms. So what is in the, um, what's in the Robin's Handing Me, the, these, oh yes, you can, um, you also, when you want to try on your sweater, you can have, um, these are our um, TK, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the names, the TKB cords, um, and you can um, always put your, um, needles. your stitches on these. <laughs> Robin said needles. She's as bad as me um, today. So um, that you could try it on. Um, on a sleeve, you might not need to use these, but you don't want to lose your stitches. You don't want to lose stitches. Mm -hmm. And I use these, of course, on a, um, this barber cord, on a um, pullover so that I can try it on. I put the <coughs> stitches on this and this cord runs through. You put it on your needle. I've shown this before, but for those who haven't seen it, you really push it hard onto the needle. And then you pull this through all your stitches. I also use this, and so then you can, um, it'll be wide enough for you to put on. And your, your needle can be, I kind of leave my needle in there. Um, I don't take it fully out, but most of the stitches then are on this cord. So then you can try it on. I also use these cords, because uh, they give you three or four. Um, I use these cords uh, for holding stitches for a sleeve. So I cut, I actually took one of them and cut them in half, put all the stitches on that, and tied a knot. So my stitches were on a sleeve, because I don't like those straight stitch holders on a sleeve, because the sleeve is curved. OK. We have it more to, to talk to about. Pick up and on this rather than on yarn. Yes. It actually does make It's sense. easier. Yeah. Um, so um, that's my sweater. This is inf actually a very fun knit, and this yarn is just to die for. So I highly recommend it. I have another finished. I have a finished object oh, so in the, the house. Yarn is the Emily. The it's the Emily. So here is the drawing sweater. A lot of you may have seen this already on, on um, Ravelry. So I think this is a fun sweater. Initially when I saw it, I thought, oh, those flowers are too much. But as it turns out, I don't think they are at all. Um, and it's, you wear it, it's a beautiful, beautiful sweater. Robin just brought me a skein of the Emily. So this is what the good grandpa sweater was made in. And it's a chainette stitch. Um, spin, and it's mulberry silk, alpaca, and merino. What's not to love about that one? Anyway, this one we made with um, our one of our new favorites is Lana's Light. These aren't the exact colors, but the dark blue was in the top of this, and then we did um, a lighter blue, but I'm, I'm out of that. I think it may have come in recently. But I'm just showing how you could do that for two colors. And then, so you can see there's a darker color up here in the yoke. 
and then it transitions, goes down into the this denim blue. And for the flowers, I use, so this is a sport weight, or a sort of sport decay. This is, um, I took a Barocco vintage sock, and I put it with the Isayer silk mohair. And it makes just this nice fuzz beautiful. And I've seen these in lots of colors. Um, I highly recommend it. One thing I would be very, very careful of is when you're carrying your floats across that you catch your floats every three stitches. There's a long expanse between here and here where the white is carried along and there, you're not knitting any white. So you really have to be careful. And what I would also recommend that as you're knitting, you give a tug on it so that the white is loose enough that it, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't constrict the inside or make that um, circumference smaller. And the same goes for the top. You have to really do that. You could even on this sweater, might even recommend that you go up one size needle for the color work when you're um, in doing all the color work. You could try that. Because this I'm going to have to, I actually have to take home and wet block because it's a little snug um, around the yoke. So that's a great suggestion. We have lots of colors of Lana's Light for this. And I might have been thinking about maybe doing a workshop in it. We shall see. Um, then we showed this recently, I believe, when we were talking about short rows. And this is the Isabel shawl, which I, I knit this and I thought it was a lot of fun. So we got a shipment in of Alegria. And I thought, well, it would be fun to show some combinations. And of course, I threw these on the table and now they're not paired up. But this is Alegria sock. And it is a super wash, 445 yards. And it's a super wash with 25% polyamide. This is super, super soft. So I love it for shawls. So that was one combination. So the, I would use the solid on these and then the multicolors in the little blips, whatever you would call those. I think there's a name, but so this is another one that I liked, these two, which is, I don't think I'll make these into kits. I'm just showing you ideas. This is um, Fondo del Mar. These are in Spanish, so I can't pronounce them right. But this is Galaxy Blue. But I love that one. And we have, this is um, called Cactus Flower and Carnival. And I think that one is so much fun. The great spring summer shawl be really fun. And this is also a great spring one. This is um, Peach and Chia, which I think that one is really fun, and um, Petal. Yeah, so those two. And this has got pinks in it. It's beautiful. And, oh, and I, this one with the light, could you bring the light pink back over? Or the, Petal? maybe the hot, hot, that one, yeah, that one. Maybe this, these two go together, I don't know. Mm. Maybe Robin's shaking your head, but I love this one. <laughs> Maybe with something else. Um, and these are um, Galaxy Blue and Fondo Del Mar, um, which is, I think, a gorgeous combination. And I brought this out, and I don't know why. Maybe the dark blue, one of the dark blues would be really pretty with this because I think this is just a really gorgeous combination. This one is called Flow, but I love the colors in this. So the Alegria, we have a lot in the shop, and um, you can come in and pick it out, and you can use it for any two-colored shawl, or you can make socks with it. So it's a really nice yarn. And then I had these, and I can't go further because the microphone's going to fall off. 
I just have a limited amount of these, so these are ones that I dyed. And this is a Donegal Superwash sock with a little mini. So you have heels and toes. So I have some combinations here. There are not a lot of them, so if you're interested, I'll get it quick. Um, here's one in gray with a lavender. And these Donegal ones have just little blips of multi, they're little multi colors. So they're fun to put another color with. I have this one. I think this colorway was my fave. Um, this one is a fun one with the yellow. And you can do the heels. You can do a cutout heel. You could do all kinds of... Um, um, and it has... These have 438 yards, so it's a generous um, amount. And it's 85% um, Merino and 15 Donegal Nep, they call it. Oh, here's another one. No. Um, but, or you could throw this in a shawl a little bit. So if you wanted to do a shawl or a scarf, you could throw a little bit of this in. Um, and finally, this is another gray that we put kind of a light brick or coral color with it. Kind of fun. So those are in the shop. And then I have just in here I have a this is a what's in the bag and this is these are from Dirty Water Dye Works we've had these before but I wanted to show them again because the colors were so popular so we have I'll show you them all together because they really are very effective um, together so I know people have some ideas and I have a customer who wanting these in particular. Um, so Sharon Peabody, if you're out there, I have them, but I will get in touch with you. And there's some other colors. Some new ones that I haven't had before. Dirty Water Dye Works is a local woman. She's over in Arlington, which is one of the just suburb of Boston. A beautiful hand dyer, and this she calls this yarn shimmer, and it is a silk mohair, and it has 459 yards, so it's 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. So this one is called sea foam. It's a lace weight. It's this one is iris. March Sky, and let's see, Pond Scum, good name, um, Beet Red, Ginger, and um, Byzantium. So I wanted to show these together because I thought people just thought these were the bee's knees, or the bomb as they say. Anyway. <laughs> I love these colors, so we're so happy to have these back. Um, so if you're interested, I would get them now. And Robin, if you could hand me the bags, I just want to show. We, um, back in the shop, it took a while to get them. We have the Artifact Canvas Knitting Bags. And so I just thought I'd show them again for people who haven't seen them. They're wonderful. They have pockets. Um, so they're back in stock. They're sturdy. They'll last forever. So that was a an orange color. This is a slate gray um, and a navy blue. Um, they're really just you could use these, you know, as a carry-all on a trip. But they're great for knitting, and they stand up really nicely. And finally, this is an olive green. So, um, that's it on, well, we have other new products, but we'll show those at another time. Um, yes, don't forget the sale. But one other thing, I was in Los Angeles, and of course, whenever I travel, I try to find yarn shops. So I found one not too far from where I was staying called the Altered Stitch. 
So if you're in Los Angeles, this was out, out in the valley. It's called Valley Village, I think is the name of the little town. But it was a lovely shop. She had a lot of Malabrico and some beautiful hand dyes. Um, so of course I had to buy some. And um, she was a lovely woman. So if you're out that way, I recommend um, giving it a visit. Um, I always like to pro promote other yarn shops because, and when you're, when you're traveling, um, it's fun to go see what's in other shops. So I hope we see you all on Sunday at the sale. Uh, it will be crowded, I'm sure. Remember that we do have a mask requirement and it's really important when we have a large group of people. We'll have masks here. Um, so if you forget yours, that's fine. We'll, um, we'll have you covered, so to speak. Um, so I hope you have a great week of knitting. Enjoy the, um, the peace and wonderful nature of knitting. Um, most of us really love it and could sit and do it all day. So take care. See you next time.